Hey, I'm back everybody. My name's Chris. I was Marty's guitar teacher when he was first uh, starting out. So he invited me back to the channel to go over some of the lessons that we did when he was first learning how to play. So this is a very cool idea. You sort of get a Marty's eye view of what he learned when he was starting out. I did a video here on this channel about triads a couple weeks ago. Got some great comments and some great responses. And so I thought I'd do a follow up here because that, you know, Marty and I talked about triads, but really the study of triads doesn't end there. It sort of starts there. They have much more potential and uh, flexibility than just mapping them to the fretboard would suggest. I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, if you haven't seen that other video, don't worry. I'm going to go over that really quickly. Basically, the way that video works is we're mapping all of the major triads to the neck. So here are all the A chords, for example. Each one of those is an A major chord, right? And so that pattern is basically everywhere you can play an A major chord. So if you take that pattern and you move it down to G or B or E or F sharp or B flat, you get all the major chords, right? So that's sort of a mapping that allows you to stitch it all together. Really great for fretboard um, familiarity and real fretboard freedom. Starts to pull all the information together so you don't ever feel like you're lost, like what's going on over there? You know, you can see all these chords, right? Once you map all the major chords, and Marty and I talked about this when he was starting out, the next question is, well, what about all the minor chords? And what about, what about diminished chords? And I've heard of augmented chords, and I've heard of suspended chords, like there's a suspended second. What about all those? Do I have to learn all of that over again for each one of those types, right? And the answer is no. What you can do is take that same mapping, that same mapping of all the major chords, and using chord formulas, you can plug in the new formula to the existing triads and alter them to be able to play any of those new chords, right? Very, very cool. Let's zoom in and I'll show you how this works. Okay, chord formulas. We're gonna use chord formulas to take that triad mapping that we did in that other video and be able to change any one of those chords into any type of chord we want. And those types are gonna be major, minor, diminished, augmented, suspended second, suspended fourth. Like there's a lot of chords, right? Maybe you don't know those chords yet. Maybe you know some of them. Maybe you only know one or two and you know it in a single position. This idea and this method will allow you to build any one of those types of chords anywhere on the neck in any key. It's extremely powerful. Just a quick review, that major triad mapping covers all 12 of the places you can play a major chord. I'm just gonna review that really quickly. Here's an A major chord. There's six strings ringing out, but this chord only has three notes, A, C sharp, and E, okay? A, C sharp, and E permutate across this neck in 12 different places, and here's that mapping. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Those are the twelve places you can play A, C sharp, and E together. Now that mapping works if you take the whole thing down a whole step, two frets, that's all the G chords. And if you take it up two frets, that's all the B chords. Take it up a fret from there, that's all the C chords, right? Twelve different places to play any major chord. Well, the question comes up right away. Major, that's great. What about minor? What about diminished? What about augmented? What about suspended second, suspended four? Like suddenly you're, you're overwhelmed. You're like, do I have to learn all of those again? Is that, is that what has to happen here? This is where chord formulas come in. So we're gonna just sort of zoom into this one chord here. This is our A major chord. Remember it's A, C sharp, and E. If you look at this chord and you just play the notes on the D, B string looks like this. That's the A, C sharp, and E. A, C sharp, and E. Those are the notes. We're going to just turn those into numbers related to the major scale. This is the root, the third, and the fifth of an A major scale. Here are the first five notes of an A major scale. Root, two, three, four, five. Root, so those are, our, those are our three notes that outline an A major chord, the root, the third, and the fifth. Here's the formula for a major chord, root three, five, right? Now, minor chords have a different formula. Here's the formula for minor chords, root flat three, five, flat. You just take that note down a half step. 
We're reducing it in pitch. We're making it flat. That's what flat means. So root three, five for major, but flat it for root, flat three, five. So there's a minor chord, right? The next chord up is diminished. Here's the formula for diminished. Root, flat three, flat five. So we've just taken those two notes and moved them down together. So this is A diminished. We're just taking these formulas, taking the chord we already understand and moving it, altering it into these other ones. The next one up is augmented. Here's the formula for augmented. Root three, sharp five. Sharp means we're going up in pitch. We're just taking it up the neck by a half step. So here's our root three, five, right? Root three, five. We just move that five up to sharp five like this. So there's A augmented. Just by altering that fifth, by moving that fifth up, we have the augmented chord. So we don't have to learn a whole new voicing. We have these voicings already. We're just gonna use them to change them into chords that we, that we need. Um, okay, two more. The suspended chord, you've probably heard of this before. Suspended, what does that mean? The suspended chord basically takes the root three five function and replaces the third with the second note in the scale or the fourth note in the scale. So suspended chords don't have a third in them. So let's just put the scale back on the neck. One, two, three, four, five. So we're gonna replace this third with either the two or the four depending on what the formula says. Here's the formula for suspended second. It's root two, five. Right, we took that third and we moved it down a whole step to the two. That's A sus two. Here's the formula for A suspended four. For a suspended four chord is root four, five. So this is A sus four. Hear how that sounds suspended? Doesn't sound very resolved. When you put the third back in, listen to this. Real resolved, right? Both of these suspended chords sound unfinished, right? Suspended. Okay, just gonna review all these real, real quickly now. These chords, Major, minor, diminished, augmented, and the two suspended chords are basically all the triad types you'll ever run across, right? And now we have a way to change any one of those major chords, those 12 different shapes, into any one of these chords, right? So I'm just gonna review them really quickly. Here's the formula for the major chord, root three, five. Here's the formula for the minor chord, root flat three, five. Here's the formula for the diminished chord, root flat three, flat five. Here's the formula for the augmented chord, root three, sharp five. Here's the formula for the suspended second chord, root two, five. And here's the formula for the suspended four chord, root four, five. So, chord formulas. Using chord formulas to take triads, alter them into the chord that you need, changes you from a chord player into a chord builder. Okay, chord formulas, right? You take that triad mapping of all the major chords, and then with just a simple few alterations of the formula of the new chord that you're looking for, you can build any chord you need in any key, right? Before today, somebody says, hey, why don't you build a, you know, here's a song that has a B flat diminished in it. Uh-oh, uh I don't really know any diminished chords. I can find B flat, but I don't know how to play a diminished chord. Now you do, right? Here's how you do it. E F G A B flat, right? B flat. Here's your triad. Root three five. Diminished is root flat three flat five. I just built a B flat diminished chord, right? I didn't have to memorize that chord. 
I didn't have to then memorize diminished chords all over the neck. I just know how to take the chords I already know and turn them into something else when I need to. This turns you from a chord player into a chord builder, right? You start to become really accountable and you can do anything you want. You can come across any chord. Hey, play a, a C sharp augmented. Bam, no problem, right? And then that's suspended chords, which don't have a third. That's interesting, right? So anytime you come across a new formula, you can just plug it into these triads. Boom, you can build any chord you need in any key. Marty, thanks so much for having me back. I really appreciate it. To everybody who's watching, I hope you found this interesting. Hope you found it helpful. And above all, I hope it piques your curiosity about this thing. Because once you start to understand how this works, your journey as a musician becomes much more pleasurable and your potential literally goes through the roof. All right, hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you next time.